Hi there folks, I'm your host Sapelio. Uh, this is part 2 of my basic uh, my basic mapping tutorial. Uh, in this one I'm going to cl cover the clipper, jump pads, matrices and the function rotating. Uh, these are all ones that are quite common and are, I get asked for a lot so uh, I thought I'd do them in the second part of this. Anyway, first you're going to want to make your box room again. Uh, this is one I made earlier. And um, first of all I'm going to do the clipper tool so what I want to do is I'm going to make a platform uh, about this size should do nicely and I'm going to resize it and I want it to, I want it to be above the point where the player can jump and this is far above that so that's good we'll go XY and uh, the clipper tool is what we're doing now so uh, clippers up here click on that and uh, with the clipper you draw two points first like so. And you see this line appearing, this is the cut line and uh, this line indicates the direction of the cut, which part will be removed. So uh, we press enter and it cuts off part of the brush. And then uh, we're going to do the same thing again on this side. And we see it there. And ta -da, And that's how you make a brush that's an odd shape. Uh, you can also do this in different views to produce different angles. I mean, get a part there like that. So uh, that's how you use the clipper tool. It's fairly straightforward, but it is very, very useful. Anyway, now that that's done, on to jump pads. So first of all, we're going to want to draw a brush just in front of this like that. And then we're going to want to move it downwards to the base. And we see here. Uh, the next thing I want, want to do with this, I'm going to do this a quick way. and change the texture to the trigger texture which is just a sort of see-through texture that indicates that well it's a trigger and uh, for this jump pad what we need to do now is right click trigger and trigger push and trigger push is our actual jump pad trigger which we'll be using and the next thing we need is a target for it to push the player at so we create a target position and then the target position we have to move above the point of where we want the player to be, so I'm going to call it about there, and then uh, we're going to want to move that in just a little bit, so it fires the player at an angle, so they land on the platform. <coughs> and next thing, we're going to want to link the two together. So first of all, select the trigger, and then select the target position, and then press Control K, and that links the two together, and we get this orange line, and that's a simple jump pad. Uh, normally what you want to do is um, below the jump pad have like a brush of some sort that indicates there's a jump pad there but uh, that's easy enough to do, you can work that out yourself. Uh, the next part, th part um, that I wanted to cover was using the simple patch mesh tool uh, which creates a matrix of predetermined size depending on what you select. So uh, here's our seer and um, you know it's just a little single flat plane, one sided. Uh, but it can be really useful for creating um, curved areas which you can't do with brushes so uh, this one we're going to rotate onto Y like that then move it over here and now uh, we see it's not quite aligned with the grid so to align something with the grid we press Control G and there we go uh, next thing we're going to want to do is reposition the edges of this so we can get our curve so we go up to the Select Vertices tool and then we select one side I'll uh, move that to there, select the middle, move that into the corner, select the bottom bit here, and move that there. And we see we've got a nice little curved part here. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is to move, well, reposition this, or resize it rather, all the way up and down, like so. And as we see in a closer view, the texture looks kind of stretched. So if we select it and press S and then hit natural, it should, well I didn't quite do it this time, it doesn't seem to like me today, produce a sort of natural, normal looking curve, like so, with the natural texture, easy enough to do. Uh, with the matrices you can also create terrain just by having a flat one, and then sort of pulling these parts in different directions, like if I do this now with this middle bit, or this particular one here, we get that happening. So you know you can do that to create terrain, I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, the next thing I wanted to cover was the function rotating. 
So once again, we're going to want to create a brush. Uh, we'll create ours five boxes long. And uh, with the function rotating, what we're going to want to do is copy paste the brush or whatever, and then put it right slap bang in the middle of the brush you want to rotate. And then we need to change the texture on this to the origin texture, which indicates where the middle of this is, where, where what um, area it will be rotating around. Uh, there it is there. Nice orange origin texture. And then select both, and then right click, and go function, rotating. And now you have to have both brushes selected for that to work. And then the next thing we do is press N, which brings up the entity menu. And then you're going to want to select an axis for this to rotate on. In this case, we're going to leave it on the Z axis, but depending on where you want it to go, you can do X axis or Y axis as well. And there's various um, keys here, like the speed and damage, if it gets blocked, etc. But uh, if you want to have more look at function rotating, you can open a fair few maps like Smelter has a couple of them, uh, but hopefully this on uh, the z-axis will rotate around like this, so it'd be good for a ceiling fan or some sort of ground fan, if you ever wanted a ground fan. Anyway, that's all I'm covering today, and um, if you wanted to play this map you'd have to place a spawn point and seal the roof and then compile it, but uh, that's what's done for the day, uh, happy mapping, over and out.